Hello and welcome. Our next candidate is Ms. Jill Yelland, who is running for Arlington Community Schools Board of Education Position 2. Welcome, Ms. Yellen, and thank you for joining us. Let's get started. So question one is, briefly explain who you are and why you want to run for public office. Sure, well, first of all, thank you guys for having me here today. I appreciate this in the absence of a public forum. I think this is an excellent opportunity for us to get a chance to all talk about um, things that make our campaigns perhaps different from our opponents. Most people probably realize I ran for school board two years ago, and I did so really just because there were some things that I thought during my oldest child's education experience that maybe could have been a little bit better. Um, some frustrations we came across and gave it a shot two years ago, got kind of close, and um, I still feel very passionate about some of those changes and would like the opportunity to at least give it a shot again. So I thought this time around with Ms. Fletcher not running for re-election that I would get my name back on the ballot and see what happens. Um, question two, what are your qualifications for this office and position? Yeah, good question. Um, I'm going to start back at the very beginning just with my own upbringing, my background. Um, both of my parents were educators. My father was an early childhood education professor at UAB and was very active in the International Playground Association. So he was gone um, every, every year, every other year to international conferences that focused on the children's rights to play. Um, one year he was president of the U.S. chapter of that. And um, when I was eight in third grade, we went to Norway to live for one year, a sabbatical. And of course the school situation in Norway was very different from what I was used to growing up in, in Birmingham, that's where I'm, I'm from. And I know ever since that year, just being exposed to an entirely different approach to education, um, it definitely gave me a different perspective on how we do things here and always look outside the box. Just because we do something here, I know things are done differently in other places. And um, there was definitely an influence in just spending an entire year in somewhere that was so culturally very different and the school setup was very different. And they did some really interesting things. And at eight years of age, probably didn't see it at the time, but when I got home and came back to the traditional American public school system, it was, it was, it was different. And there are a lot of things that I reflected on fondly and still do from that one year made a huge impression on me even in, in third grade. So with my dad, that, his background, I mean, we, he, his emphasis on play and the child psychologist that he was, and then my mother being a kindergarten teacher for many years and then later a curriculum specialist for Jefferson County Schools in Birmingham, our dinner table conversations were almost entirely about education. And um, my, my brother and I, he's older, and he actually went to film school, um, sat there and we, we both feel very strongly about the schools that our, our kids go to. So having said that, then my own education, um, went to public schools all the way through. My high school experience was fantastic. I mean, it was a magnet school, but it was a public school. And a couple years after I graduated, it was listed by Newsweek magazine as the number one school in America, which I think is quite an accomplishment for a little school in Birmingham. And they did some things kind of outside the box. Um, probably the best example that was wonderful was that every junior and senior had the opportunity to do a work study program. And so we had a counselor who set all that stuff up for us so we could, you know, a lot of kids went to UAB and worked in the labs. Um, my junior year, I worked at a, um, a music studio because I thought it would be kind of fun and I knew I probably wouldn't do that as a career, but it was really fun to do. And then I did journalism, um, Birmingham Magazine, my, my senior year. And that was every single Wednesday. We had, didn't go to school, we went and did our little internship. So um, from there, I went to Alabama, University of Alabama, and got my undergraduate um, Bio, in biology and humanities. It was through New College at University of Alabama. And then went to the University of Cincinnati and got my master's degree in medical genetics. So when we moved to Memphis, it was because that was my first job out of graduate school. And I worked at Le Bonheur and then UT Medical Group. And my role as a genetic counselor, I think has certainly given me some skills that might work for the Board of Education. Um, communication, I was kind of the liaison between the patient and the doctors. When you're a genetic counselor, you're working with patients to make sure they understand what, what's going on with either themselves or their child. And um, everything we did was evidence-based. So of course, if you're talking about um, a woman who's got a hereditary risk for breast cancer, you're gonna be looking at all the things that we know are gonna work in terms of treatment, prevention, and that's all based on with the evidence-based approach. So that sort of stuff I think is important in the school setting as well, because when we see something happening, in other school systems, and a good example is in Texas where they have done the 
um, introduced in a portion of schools three to four 15-minute um, recess times for kindergarten through second grade and then seen an amazing improvement in the kids social interactions less bullying um, kids get along so much better and then their test scores went uh, got a lot higher as well and it goes back to doing things that are development and appropriate for kids of certain ages um, so the ev evidence-based approach communication and um, you know, being being a liaison um, those are kind of the main things I think that my job as a genetic counselor gave me some skills that might hopefully would help with you know being on the board of education Great. okay let's go to question three um, in your opinion what does the role of a member of the board of education play in our school system okay. members of the board of education kind of have two roles um, they're an advocate for teachers and for parents and for kids um, not just locally but at the state level as well because we have a state board of education and um, I think it's, it would be very important to make sure that as a board member listen to what parents concerns are as a parent that was a frustration that I always had that although you could go to a board meeting you have your two minutes to talk it is not a question and answer session you just state your case you may or may not get a response afterwards but you certainly don't get one then I've always thought that at least we look into the Board of Education having once or twice a year, if not quarterly, some kind of Q&A forum for parents to come to. Because, sorry, there's always questions that people have or concerns, and I think just to have some sort of place where they know they can go and have and voice their concerns would be, would be good. Um, so advocacy, and then of course policy setting, that's the other main thing. The school board sets the policy and then the school administration implements the policy. Um, question four, if you could choose one item that needs addressing currently in our schools, um, in our school system, what would that be? Good question. Okay, so <clears throat> hard to narrow it down to just one. I'm going to separate it by age ranges. Um, probably the first thing that even got me even thinking about running for school board two years ago was when my oldest was in middle school and we didn't have, she didn't have the opportunity to do a lab dissection. For a lot of people, maybe that's not a big deal, but I think when you're talking about the sciences, in capturing kids' interest in science at that age before they have to choose their focus area going on to high school. That is a seemingly simple task, but something that's so much different from just typical textbook worksheet work learning that um, kids should have the opportunity to do that. And a lot, of, a lot of districts do. It's a pretty standard thing. And for some reason, we didn't have that in our middle school. So that kind of piqued my interest, but I thought not the end of the world. We can deal with that, I guess, when we get to high school level, she'll have that opportunity. And then that didn't happen in high school. We got to, she was in honors biology, and again, it was no dissections offered. So that's something that I think high quality labs at the upper class level is very important to get those introduced and in chemistry as well. Um, I mentioned earlier about the, the recess time um, for unstructured play time for elementary school kids or younger elementary school kids. That's something I would like to at least explore, put on the discussion table. More broadly, I'd like to just have like pull back on the whole approach of one size fits all for an edu education approach for the kids because one size fits all stuff doesn't really fit anybody very well. Um, it can be awkward and uncomfortable if it doesn't fit you well. And certainly you've got kids who don't need an entire week to cover a math skill, for example. They may get it on day one. If they understand it on day one, then why wait two or three days or an entire week to have to move on to the next skill? Conversely, you have kids that might not understand it after week one. And when you're talking about elementary school-based math, um, that foundation is critical. You have to have a good, solid understanding of math in those early years because everything builds on that. And if your foundation isn't strong, all those higher-level maths are just going to come crumbling down and you're going to be struggling the entire time. So with all of this adaptive software that's out there now and us using the, the iPads, I believe there's probably a, a, a way we can look at customizing some of these things a little better and making it more individualized for kids who might need more help in certain areas or who already get it and are ready to move on to something else. Yeah, absolutely. Um, question five, if elected, how would your participation on our Board of Education change Arlington Community Schools in the next four years? Well, board members, are, they're five, so um, for one to make a huge change, um, it, it would be great if one was able to. I would certainly hope after, after four years, if I were to be lucky enough to be elected, that parents would feel like their voices were being heard, um, that students were more excited to go into class every day, and they were more engaged in the learning process, um, that teachers had more support, even just more money for supplies. 
um, and that we had a better, bigger presence at the state level. I think that's something I would be pushing for as well. Okay, great. Well, um, if that's everything, that's all the time we have for today. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you, Ms. Roberts. Um, early voting starts August 30th, and official voting starts September 19th. September 19th is Election Day. Okay. Well, thanks so much for joining us today. Thank you. Where was my script? I have no idea when uh, early voting was. It wasn't on the screen. Yeah.